Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 13 of Pumping Iron, the review series for the classic muscle cars of GT6. And in this episode we're featuring a, a widely loved and very popular model of the classic muscle car range, the Mustang. And this is of course the Shelby version, the GT350 Mustang. There are two versions of the Mustang available from Shelby currently on the game. There's this version, which is the GT350, it's from 1965, it's a premium model. And there's also a non-premium version called the GT350R. Now in terms of sheer spec, both cars are very similar. They're slightly different, but very, very similar. And in terms of performance, they're almost identical. Except for one strange thing. This car is less than half the price of the non-premium model. And I'm not really sure why. That doesn't make sense. But, hey, that's polyphony for you. So, what does this car, as popular as it is, have to offer? Because, as big a following as the Mustang has in the real world, you don't see a huge amount of people using it on Gran Turismo. Not this version, anyway. Well, on paper it can initially seem to be at a bit of a disadvantage compared to some of its insanely overpowered brethren. The engine is relatively small for a muscle car. It's a 4.3 litre or 261 cubic inch V8. Compound that with the fact that it can't be turbocharged or supercharged, and it doesn't exactly sound like a good deal. However, Despite having a relatively small capacity engine, and no turbo or supercharger to speak of, it still puts out 650 horsepower and 645 foot-pounds of torque. That's pretty impressive, considering no supercharger. Imagine what it could put out if it did have a supercharger. 800 horsepower at least, would be my guess. But the best thing about this Mustang by far is its weight. It's, as far as I can recall off the top of my head, the lightest muscle car in the game. At 1,039 kilos with the Stage 3 weight loss package. And that is extremely light. That's the kind of weight that you'd expect from a, a stripped out hardcore track car. Something like an Evo or a Ford Focus RS. Not from a muscle car. But this car is that light. And if you think about it, the fact that it doesn't have a silly amount of power or torque combined with that low weight is actually kind of a good thing. Because if you think about it, if you've got a ridiculous amount of power and torque going through the rear wheels of something that weighs as much as nothing, essentially, you've got no weight grounding that power. So you're just going to spin up the wheels all the time. Because most muscle cars work on the same principle as a train on the train tracks. The sheer weight of the vehicle is what gives it its traction. And for most muscle cars, their sheer weight stops them from wheel spinning excessively. This car, though, if it had the same power as, say, a Chevy Chevelle or a Cuda or a Charger, would be wheel spinning constantly. Now, as it is, you can still make it wheel spin, so 650 horsepower feels just about right for this car. And it certainly doesn't lack performance. The top speed is around the 230 mile per hour region. The acceleration is more than enough for most tracks. And overall, it's a fast car. So 650 horsepower isn't really a disadvantage for this car at all. It also puts out a very respectable power to weight ratio per ton of 626, which considering its power is very good. The PP on this particular model is perhaps a surprisingly low 563, which undercuts many of the other big powered muscle cars by a significant margin. And that's actually a good thing, because this car is much better at a lower PP level, where you can really use its handling and low weight advantages to just that, your advantage. Overall then, it's a premium model, it's got fantastic low weight and handling, and the performance, despite an apparent disadvantage on paper, is still more than enough to get it done on most tracks. So overall, the GT350 is a pretty good deal. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Mustang in general, but even I have to admit that 
this car is a very, very good all-round muscle car. Now, there is one thing in particular to be noted about the car. Not necessarily to be wary of, but just to know. And that is, because of the low weight, even without having an insane amount of power, it is more tail-happy than some of its rivals. So you do need to bear that in mind. But, at the same time, it's nothing that can't be neutralised with a bit of carefully placed ballast. So overall, it's a great car that's an interesting alternative from the more obvious choices like the Cuda and the Charger, and despite having an apparent disadvantage on paper, is a very good all-round muscle car. So that's it for this episode, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.